Good morning, all. My name is Sharon Gorecki, and I'm here with my co-host, Mr. Reggie from Temple Corps. And on today's episode, we're going to just talk about what's going around Central Maryland. And Mr. Reggie, he's going to give you some history on the Salvation Army because he is our local historian and he knows so much. Now let's get started. If you are in need of fresh food, visit our website, www.sa-md.org. Click on Pantry on the Go, and we have dates, and we have location information on where you can pick fresh produce that will last you a week, That thanks to Maryland Food Bank. So recently, actually, I, I saw Mr. Reggie, Rebecca Chestnut, our Director for Disaster Emergencies from Potomac Division, she came to our CSFP warehouse to teach our staff, our core members, and our volunteers emergency protocol, hygiene tips, food preparation, transportation, and so much more with our Feed More Mobile Canteen program. Because Mr. Reggie, Temple Corps, and many of our volunteers will be handling expanding the program to different parts of East and West Baltimore. Yes, ma'am. And it was very, very interesting. And I'm glad to be prepared. So are you also, this actually ties to a next point. We need more volunteers, don't we? Oh, most definitely. I, I, we always need volunteers, the people who are willing to help someone other than themselves. Are you looking to give back to your community? Are you interested in combating hunger and helping our street homeless? Our Feed More Mobile Canteen, we need more volunteers. We need help. Go to our website. We need help. We need help. Go to our website, www.sa-md.org. Click on the volunteer page. Send Samantha Bowman an email to volunteer for our Feed More Mobile Canteen. Not only will you be doing the most good, but you're going to be saving someone's life giving them Absolutely. food, prayer, and reassurance. This Everything's kind of tied together, but um, the Salvation Army recently created a young professionals group called Baltimore Echelon. In this professional group, members can participate in volunteer opportunities, fundraising, and they also are part of some exclusive events. Visit our website, www.sa-md.org. Click on the Baltimore Echelon page. Contact Eric Mook for more information. But this group, you build your leadership skills. You are giving back to your community, and it's pretty exclusive. Now, if you are a senior above the age of 65, you qualify for our CSFP program. So our Commodity Supplemental Food Program provides a week's worth of groceries, USDA enriched, especially if you're a senior who's having financial issues, mobility issues, or just needs that extra sustenance. We recommend calling Meals on Wheels to be part of that list at 410-558-0932. So this is kind of cool, but it's summer camp time. <laughs> Great. It is summer camp time. And then Captain Tidman is at Camp Rappahannock right now. I just saw a picture on Facebook. I think he's on a canoe or a boat, but he's <laughs> having such a good time right now. Shout out to Captain Tidman. Shout out to Captain Tidman. <laughs> so July 3rd through July 8th, our Salvation Army is celebrating, that's next week, National Boys and Girls Club Week. Yeah, cool. <laughs> our Boys and Girls Club, we have over 60 members at Camp Rappahannock. We have the most kids in the Potomac Division. Oh, nice. Having fun and celebrating National Boys and Girls Club Week with sports, with activities, with enrichment, and with spiritual growth. Yes. If you want to enroll your child in our Boys and Girls Club, visit our website, www.sa-md.org. The last thing I wanted to share is that last weekend, the Salvation Army of Central Maryland won two Emmys. We won two Emmys, two for two. <laughs> Congratulations, God bless you. So our communications team, we won for best long form religious documentary for Hope is on the Way. So congrats to Patrick, I guess congrats to myself, but we're a team. I always say communications team, we're a team effort in God. Amen. It's all God who gave us this accolade. So our second Emmy goes to, for best video editing. 
for the documentary about our Feed More Mobile Canteen program called Doing the Most Good. Patrick O'Neill. Amen. Patrick O'Neill. Best epic. Epic. Second generation. Second generation. Second Emmy win. And Mr. Reggie, since he's our local historian, he knows way more than I do. You have a, you have information. You have yes. stories about that. Yes. You want to share? Well, uh, I just wanted to mention the fact that Patrick's father was very large in the community here in Baltimore, right? It was wonderful seeing him do his work and to acknowledge the fact that he won six Emmys, I believe it was. Six. Six Emmys. And now his son, Patrick. Two has won two Emmys. What a wonderful story. One that we want to get out there, right? We want to make sure that we acknowledge all the good that comes from Baltimore, right? Uh, we want to make sure that we hold them up to that light and the reasoning behind everything. The Bible. Right here, the Bible, right? You got to keep on and keep in mind that they once said nothing good comes from, oh, oh my, I forgot. It's all good. Yeah. <laughs> it's all good. We'll train but, it uh, on. But where, where, where Jesus was, was born, nothing good comes from there. But Jesus came from there, right? Mm -hmm. It was just not uh, 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 something that everybody talked about, right? So, you know, they say the same thing about Baltimore. What I say, something good is everywhere. It is. There's good in people. There's good in places. There's good in history that's being forgotten and put behind us. Right? There's good everywhere. And when we find it, we have to raise it up to the yep. light. So Mr. Reggie is our local historian. He's ready to spit out some history that she, I don't think you can Google. He just knows it. He has studied it. He's gone to libraries. He has done his research. Take it away, Mr. Reggie. <laughs> God bless you, first of all. I, and I always want to let you know that everything that we do came from here. And the history sort of proves that out. And I'm going to do a short brief, right? Maybe later on we'll get deeper into it. But a short brief of how... Uh, Salvation Army came to both America and Baltimore, right? This is a bit of both histories because uh, we started we started in London and we went over that. I will go into that into more details. We were started in London. We went from London to New York, the very first place in America that uh, the Salvation Army established a church. The second place was Philadelphia. In Philadelphia, they had two, two, uh, not brothers, well, I, I keep calling them brothers, right? Two, two members who walked from Philadelphia to Baltimore. <laughs> Can you imagine that? I've driven from Philadelphia to Baltimore and had to make several stops. <laughs> that's a far, that's far. That's, that's a long way. That's long. And they were doing it because they wanted to advance the word of God, right? And so we come back to the Bible again, right? So when they were arrived here, they started a meeting, right? First, the place that we had was open air meetings right here where we are now, Light Street. We had uh, open air meetings right up the street at the market. Uh, what's the name of the market up the street? Cross Street Market Cross is not. Cross Street Market. It's not too far from where our office is. Right. It's right there. Right there. So the history has a way of repeating itself and touching base where it's been before. <clears throat> the first meetings that we had in Baltimore was at that Cross Street Market. And if you look, a little small little plaque up there to acknowledge that particular history, right? Open air theater, open air church, right? And the second thing that they did was that they uh, went to establish a church in Baltimore City. And where they started is where we are trying to get started, which is off of Pennsylvania Avenue. Pennsylvania Avenue has its own history, right? Um, but hardly anybody know that Pennsylvania Avenue is where Salvation Army 
first had their established church. I didn't know that. Yeah, right off of Pennsylvania Avenue. As a matter of fact, we had a little bit of help. And I want to stop and acknowledge that particular help. We had afternoon and evening meetings at the William Street Independent Methodist Church. I wanted to get that correct because that church still is in existence and is still working for the Lord today. It's still up and running. It's still up and running. Yeah. And the ch pastor of the church at that time was the Reverend Thomas Lowe. Okay, and uh, they had the morning service and they allowed us to have an afternoon and evening service in their basement. And from those minor beginnings, we will be building a new facility off of Pennsylvania Avenue. Once again, to see how the Lord works. There's a, my pastor used to say, there's God. So let me just stop and say, there's God. And I just want to give you a brief history. We'll do more later. But some of the things that how we relate to how in West Baltimore we were established. Now, Baltimore Temple, right, my church, the one that I attend the last 25, 30 years, Baltimore Temple was the main, temple generally means the main church in the area, temple. Although when they started Baltimore Temple, it wasn't my church. It wasn't my church. We don't know what? exactly what happened to that. We were given that designation and that name, right? But basically speaking, uh, Baltimore Temple, we don't know where it was, right? It was lost in history. There was a little small little detail for the history of Baltimore. It was a fire that burned everything and all the records. Oh, I'll go into detail because the Salvation Army lost almost everything in the Great Fire, right, mm -hmm. in Baltimore. Burned it down. So we're not exactly sure about the records. Over 100 years ago. Over, over 100, 100 years, years We've ago. We've been wow. in Baltimore Temple and West Baltimore uh, approximately 150 years. We have a history here. I stand on the shoulder of those who came before me, and there were many of them. Uh, we struggled to survive here in Baltimore. Right, um, several times in our history, we had uh, two main churches to begin with, and that was Hamden and Baltimore Temple. Well, things got so tough, so rough, right? Because you know, I remember we are a church. A lot of people see the organization and see the good that we do, and they forget who we really are. We are a church. What we do. That's right. What we do comes from this Bible. What we do comes from this book. How we do comes from years of trying to do the best that we can, right? And uh, I just want to say that the churches work by donations. We work by the good of the people surrounding us. You know, they got a joke, uh, actually I say they, I'm hiding behind the fact that it's actually me. And I always say, if you want to know where the local Salvation Army Church is, you go to the worst area of town and turn right. Yeah. I would make that joke over and over again because when we went to new places, vacation, we would always say that joke and then we would go look for the local Salvation Army Church. Right. So Baltimore has a very, very... Uh, good history with with Baltimore, Baltimore Temple and the Salvation Army. Two people walked to establish this church. The good that they did has been multiplied many times over. The, the way that our church survived, there were times when we were neither Hamden Corps nor Baltimore Temple Corps, but one Corps. You see, there were times when we had to sacrifice in order to keep doing the good. You know, the good 
comes from the Bible, right? We do the most good. You know, you may have heard that. Well, our history is full of that. So I just want to stop there. I'll have more installments. I yet to tell you about the there Mississippi Riverboat. Trust me, there is not only history. Mr. Reggie knows so much about the Bible and the scripture and relating it to like day to day life. Like, trust me, this this podcast series is going to get very exciting soon. God bless you. God keep you. You have a lovely day. And one more thing, please come to uh, Temple Core every Sunday. We have service around 11 o'clock. You get to meet Mr. Reggie. You get to hear great stories. You get to have fellowship, make friendships, lifelong friendships. Please come on Sundays. Yes. And uh, we also want to mention we have a new captain, Captain Culber. Ooh. Right. Tell and us more. She actually, Captain Culber has a history with Baltimore Temple. Uh, years ago, she was at Annapolis Corps and she was simply a soldier, right? Same thing as I. She was simply a soldier. But now she come back as the pastor of the church. She worked with our children to do a play. Very beautiful young lady. And she's a very beautiful pastor right now. I look forward to working with her, right? And I know her heart is in the right place. We're going to do good things. The Lord has blessed us and in, 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 in our work. I look for that to continue. And with that note, see you all next week where we'll talk about local events and learn more about the Salvation Army. Bye, y'all.